In market news today, we saw the PPI results coming out and they were all hotter than anticipated. This is not good. The hotter than anticipated producer price index figures coming out means that the CPI and inflation rate could also be hotter. That will push yields up, the DXY up, the stock markets down and crypto down. How did the main markets reflect the increase in the PPI? Not too badly, except for energy, which got a little bit whacked. What about the crypto market not enjoying that excess PPI? If you would like to access this data anytime, go to ctksnews.com and just hit market analysis. It's all there for you. There are always opportunities inside every single market and crypto is no exception. If you go to ctksnews.com and click on the market cap section there, you will get crypto bubbles and who doesn't love bubbles? We saw PNT, Super BNT come up. Also Super Red was doing quite well. Looking at the crypto market, we can see the Bitcoin is down 2.28%. Bitcoin Cash is showing a bit of a sign of life, as is Monero. These two do particularly well when Bitcoin is starting to recover. And that may sound pretty strange, but there are some reasons that we have to look at positive price momentum, and I'll explain that as we go through. There were $63 million worth of liquidations, 50, nearly 51 million being long liquidations inside the crypto market in the past 24 hours. The greatest gainers, top 100 past 24 hours, Loom, Woo, eCash, BSV, Tether Gold, Maker, Ocean, and Quant. The greatest losers, past 24 hours, top 100, Tezos, Litecoin, Carva, Rune, Mantle, IOTA, DYDX, and AVAX. It's important to understand how charts intercorrelate and interconnect. Here we have Bitcoin, that blue line. Here we have the US two-year yield. You'll notice as the two-year yield goes up, what does Bitcoin do? It comes down. Bitcoin and crypto are very rate sensitive. There's a very big difference between retail support and resistance levels and structural support and resistance levels. When we look at this particular price action, and let's just say we go from here to the current yield, that's covering one day and nine hours. This is only retail. If we draw in resistance and support levels, we would say, oh, there's support here. There's resistance here. But is that truly the case? The US two year, the chart dates all the way back to 1988. I don't think one day out of all those thousands of days really gives that much weight. But many people will say that's the most important signal. It's not true. Structure is the most important signal. So let's throw on the structural indicator and see where the actual resistance is, dating all the way back to 1988. We can see that the US two year has had trouble getting through this structural resistance at 5.0085. It's tried again and again, and it's starting to break through. If we get through this particular barrier, we will be heading up to the next one, 5.0311. If we get rejected here, we're heading down to the lower one, the lower structural level at 4.9208. If we head down here, that means this structural resistance level will be too strong. That will also mean the stock market and crypto will rally, as you've seen. The US two year and Bitcoin are inversely correlated. If the yields are going up, that's bad for risk on assets. Retail support and resistance levels are very misleading. Oh, we've got an alert on Litecoin. That's because they're not structurally based. If we look at the S&P 500, the chart dates all the way back to 1871. Let's throw on the structural indicator. And this is why I was mentioning you need to be prepared for upward price momentum, even though the PPI came in hotter than anticipated. The CPI is likely to also be hotter than anticipated, but we're getting above structural resistance levels and potentially turning it into support. That particular level is 43.72 on the S&P 500. You'll note that we've got a fresh air gap all the way up here to 44.03. That's very good because price can move up very, very quickly in these fresh air gaps. 
if we lose this structural support and move to the lower one at 43.56, that would indicate the yields are spiking and the US economy is starting to falter. If the US two-year, the US 10-year spike, the DXY will spike and we will witness the S&P 500 falling to lower structural levels. At least with the CTKS method, you know where the structural levels are. It's the first method in the world to reveal them. Gold is a very good indicator of risk off at behavior. It, it is a flight to safety asset class. So when we see gold coming up, that shows that there's either economic, political or other turbulence in global financial markets. And that, of course, is the case at the moment. But where are the structural levels? Because structure is everything. We can't rely on recent indicative price because if we do, we'll RIP our money. When you look at this structural support level playing out on gold at 1857, we did struggle with that for quite some time. And then we saw that consolidation and that push above the structural level. Where was the next structural level at 1872? And it caught gold. It's actually confirmed that we have the potential of moving up to the next structural level, which is at 1880. There is always the ability to retest and resume off that level, but the bears would be expecting that we break down from this 1872 level and come back to the lower structural support of 1857. The bulls would be anticipating that we rise up to that 1880 level and then up further. There is a lot of geopolitical instability. The favor is to move upwards in gold, but if yields rise too quickly, that will put negative price momentum on gold. So let's have a look at silver. It's very easy to see retail support and resistance levels as well as retail thinking. Retail thinking only assumes there's one resistance and one support inside the market, and that's drawn from recent indicative price. However, the problem with silver, it's been trading since 1802. So to understand what silver's structural levels are, we pop on the indicator from the CTKS method service. There are multiple resistance levels and multiple safety nets or structural support levels below price. And this has always been the case. When we looked at silver and we looked recently at gold, it wasn't just gold hitting structural resistance levels. Silver hit them as well and it had too. When we saw a blow up in gold's price through that fresh air gap, silver did actually better than gold. Silver is far more volatile. We're seeing a different kind of play out when it becomes a comparison from silver to gold. We can see that because gold, when it came up, it's been going upwards. But what about silver? You can see that difference when silver came up, it's been going down, but it's fast approaching a structural support level. That structural support level for silver is playing out at $22.03 and it's a pretty strong one. We have a lower structural support level on silver at just a little over $22. The bulls will be seeking to watch a bounce on this particular structural level and up to the next one, which is at 22.13 and even the higher one because you can see silver is very spiky by nature up to that 22.17 mark. The bears will be seeking to watch silver decay below these two structural levels and move their way down. But this structural support level at 2186 and the confluence just a little bit lower at 2184, they're both strong levels. We would expect a rejection from bearish price momentum and a technical bounce. Retail support and resistance levels are always drawn from recent indicative price. When we look at Bitcoin, and Bitcoin is a fantastic barometer of risk on or risk off behavior, we can see the price history dates back to 2009. Therefore, we need to know at those, we need to look at those structural levels. And if we turn on the indicator, we can see very, very clearly we've had a rejection from a mass of structural now resistance levels on Bitcoin. The problem here is the next lower structural support safety net 
is just here at 26 238 and is very light. That means it could move down even more to the 29 956 mark. So this is something to be aware of. When you get a big sell down through structural levels, you often get a retest and a resumption down. That's what we're looking at in Bitcoin's price momentum at the current time. It looks like the bears have a hold on Bitcoin. Crypto is an exponential asset class. Just because we've had an underside retest and we've got a resumption down doesn't mean that the bears will gain full control. What the bulls are looking to do is break through this structural resistance level at 26,892. There's a little one further above that, 26,905, and one above that at 26,921. They will seek to take out, the bulls will seek to take out these structural resistance levels, turn them to support and make their way up to the stronger structural resistance levels at 27,290. It's very important that the bulls gain control over this particular area. If the bears continue to push Bitcoin down, our first structural safety net is at 26,234 and the lower one at 26. 954. We could pass through this one at that 26,230 odd mark because it's very light and you may not even be able to see it on the chart. But if you have the indicator on, you'll be able to see it quite easily. The concept is these lighter levels are weaker. The stronger levels, the brighter they are, the stronger they are. If they have a lot of confluence around, a lot of different levels stacking against each other, that makes the level stronger. So far with Bitcoin, we're seeing bearish price momentum. You might remember earlier that we got an alert on Litecoin. Let's check that out. The way to create more, more certainty inside financial markets is to stack probabilities. When we look at Litecoin's chart, which has started in 2013 and we throw the smart money indicator on, what are we actually seeing? Ouch, this is not looking too crash hot. What we've seen is a violation in a structural support level. That structural support has been lost and the one below it has been lost as well. This means that the bears are not only gaining control over Bitcoin, they gain control over the entire crypto market. That's precisely why it's very important to look at Bitcoin. Price is always moving in a wave, even if we have negative price momentum on Litecoin. The probability is that we'll get caught by these structural safety nets, structural support levels at 59.96 and a little bit lower at 59.88. So the bears may have limited downside at the moment. A lot of people just expect when price comes down, it's going to go to zero. That's not the case. It goes to a structural level. And if you have the indicator, you know where those structural levels are. As a community, we do three-dimensional risk management, which means that we, when we see price coming down, we don't automatically say, yes, it's going to the lower one. Because price is always moving in a wave. It's going up and down, up and down. It's very possible to come back and retest this higher 61.12 level. If we get a shift inside global financial markets and risk on is the order of the day, we'll get above here and the bears will get smashed and the bulls will take control. That's why you need to know where the structure is. If that happens and we trade above the 61.12 mark, we're going up to the next structural level at 61.60. There's also a higher structural level at 61.87. These are light resistance levels. That means they can pass through them relatively quickly. One thing to also note, when you look at a structural level inside any particular price chart, because they're all the same, you interpret them in exactly the same way. You can see that 61, 61 mark was rejected, 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 got negative air. If it's not going above, it's coming below. And when you see price slice through, you can see that the bears are gathering momentum inside the market. 
One of our secret weapons inside the crypto market is total crypto market cap, which has been marked up with the smart money indicator since 2014. So let's have a look at the structural levels. We can see a structural level right here at 1.029 trillion. What does total crypto market cap actually do? It's all about the total capitalization of every single crypto project. Note this very, very strong support level. This is a structural support level and it caught price as it was coming down at that 1.026 trillion. That means the downside price momentum could be very limited. And this is why I say we must stack probabilities. It's vitally important. The bears will be seeking to crunch through this level, go down, retest and resume down. The bears, if they gain control over the crypto market in this way, just keep your eye on total crypto market cap because all of the alts will follow. And of course, Bitcoin is a major component of total crypto market cap as well. Bitcoin will be coming down, but not by the same percentage as the alts. The bulls will be seeking to breach this 1.029 level of resistance, smart money resistance as it stands at the current time. Now, where are the targets for the bulls and the bears? When we look up a little bit higher, we can see the bullish target is 1.051 trillion. If the bulls take control, they'll end up reversing all the losses that have been experienced so far. If the bears gain control, they'll be seeking to push it down to the first take profit target of $1.008 trillion. And when I'm talking about the first take profit target, maybe a very good way to explain this to you, where the price could be. Just zooming out a little bit more, you can see around the 11th of September, this particular structural level just coincides with that price action. So just keep that in mind. The way that you practically apply this, look at the beloved chart, the beloved alt that you're trading. Look back to around the 11th of September. Note that particular price. If the bears gain control over the crypto market, that price could be hit again. That's how you read this particular diagram. If the bulls come in and maintain control, we could get a bit of wobbliness around this structural safety net because they're gravitational by nature. That means that we could go a little bit lower, reclaim those particular areas and start to move up. If we start to move up, you would expect whatever was happening around here on your chart around the 25th of September. Say you were looking at Bitcoin Cash or Solana or ADA. Just keep those two dates in mind around the 25th of September and around the 11th of September. Those two areas will give you a big insight into what could happen to your charts. The main thing to do is just to be aware of the different economic events that are coming out inside the market. Watch how the market actually relates to those events and check your structural levels. It's very important to do. For the cost of a takeaway cappuccino each day, you can get the trading view indicators for the tier one, tier two and tier three structural levels, as well as a video that explains three dimensional risk management or the paths for the next month. That's available at ctksmethod.org. I appreciate you so much for watching. And thank you to everybody who comments. Day in and day out, Kate and I are here for you. We want you to succeed. Have a great day or night ahead, my friends. And Kate and I look forward to catching up with you again in the next video. Bye for now.